Hello and welcome to this episode of The Circularists and I am thrilled to have with me Matt Inman who lives in Taiwan. Originally from North Carolina, Matt is a teacher and is going to tell us all about what he's up to in Taiwan. Matt, the floor is yours. Can't wait all, right. to all about your work. <laughs> all right, thank you Karen uh, for the introduction. Yeah, like Karen said, I'm a, a teacher. I, I was an English teacher for about 10 years and still am, but after doing a master's in environmental science, now I'm like, you know, I've always been passionate about uh, environmentalism and only recently started to learn more about circular economy. And so I've been doing like lectures with uh, anywhere from elementary to university students about circular economy and, you know, the dangers of plastic, all that good stuff. So yeah, that's what I'm working on mostly. Matt, this sounds amazing. So you are empowering the the young generation, the next generation, to enter their adulthood with an awareness of the need for a circular economy and for, for right. keeping our environment safe, so that mm -hmm. they they have this mindset already, rather than trying to introduce that mindset later, right? Right, that's the goal. Yeah, like because I mean I didn't know about this stuff until recently, and it's something I'm interested in. So I I learn new stuff every day, like so easily, mm -hmm. and I know like the education system. I mean, actually, I'm lucky enough to live in a country Taiwan where they are really like pushing for uh, the SDGs, Sustainable mm -hmm. Development Goals, and Circular Economy. Mm -hmm. They're like really starting to promote this more and more. So I'm you know I want to be one of the catalysts to help kids yeah. and children understand that more and more so that like you said they can be the ones you know to start thinking about this now while they're still young and right. you know as they become business leaders or you know whatever they want to do they'll have the power and knowledge to try to you know make these changes and differences so matt there's something that springs to mind immediately here with your work so you're teaching young people about the environment which means you've got to be honest with them about where we are now, right? Mm, right. How yep. do you navigate that without freaking them out? Because frankly, a great question. I freaked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. To be honest, I'm, I'm kind of pessimistic, honestly. But I, for me, like, if I just give up and do nothing, I'll feel a lot worse than if I didn't at least try my best to like be a part of the solution, you know. Yeah. But right. I. To answer your question i try my best to not like you know put that on them so i try to use like humor and like uh statistics but then bring it back to nothing is like set in stone like right. so i try to remind them like you guys have the power you know yes. you're the ones who can really make a difference because most of the people our age like i wouldn't say most but a lot of people our age are like set in their ways right if they're not if they haven't changed yet it's it's harder to do, sure. but these you know, younger people, they have the power to like start to think about what can they do to like make these differences. So I, I try to remind them that, yeah, things are not great right now mm -hmm. and bad things are going to happen, but it's not set in stone. We can still make changes. So, And how do they receive this? How, how do they feel about what past generations have done to the planet, the legacy that's been left? How do they generally feel about this uh to be honest i try not to get too much into that because i don't think there's too much to be gained from it i think because we all know it's yeah we've been like lied to and yeah just the problems are there mm. it doesn't to me it doesn't quite it's not a, the focus shouldn't be on what happened right because we can't really change it it should be mm -hmm. on what we can do now right so right. i i let them know like you know this is what happened. Of course, we should learn from that behavior. But mm -hmm. going forward, like I try to show them more of the positive things that are happening. Like right. I would show them examples of circular economy. Like, look what these guys are doing, and these guys, and these guys. Like, you know, so that they get ideas of, oh, this this is possible that we can like to we could totally transform the world if if enough people are on board, right? I want to come to that in a minute. The circular economy because that's a biggie. Um, right. Just staying with the children for a moment and their outlook for the future. Mm. Whenever I've spoken to young climate warriors, there's such a fire and a fight and an optimism for their future. Right. And I think yeah. that's part of being young. You have this ferocious, courageous way, outlook 
right. typically, not everybody, yeah. but there's yeah. there's this fire because it's your future and you're running to it. Right. Is that do, do you find where's the hope? Where do you where do you place the hope when you when you mm. teach them? Right. Well, yeah, I I don't really get to see that fire stage too much as I would like because I'm I'm usually teaching like um like for university kids, for example, like I teach tourism students. So they're not exactly like they don't have much knowledge about this. So I'm kind of right. I think for a lot of them, I'm the for, I'm showing them for the first time like wow. look at this and this. Right. So for me, luckily I get to see like the oh wow, that's okay. Crazy. Yeah. Right. So right. So you're oh, not really yeah. picking them up off the floor as such. Right. Maybe that time. happens after I've seen them. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, <laughs> yeah. But uh, <laughs> I'm, like I said, I, I'm pretty new to like getting to teach them. It's only been about a year and a half. Right. So maybe as I progress, I'll get more opportunities to deal with those specific situations. But yeah, right now I'm enjoying like being able to show them, like open their eyes to both the problems and the possible solutions. Awesome. So, and I, I do see like hope in their eyes when I show them like, oh, this these things are happening right now. Right. You know? Amazing. And so um let's go back to the circular economy. You touched on that just mm. now. Um right. so the circular economy is if all eyes are on this circular economy, this new system, um, this alternative system that the world needs to build. We need right. an alternative operating system for the world. No yeah. small thing. Mm-hmm. what what's your curriculum what are you teaching them Don't, so, so curious to know this. yeah i mean it's different for each class like for example i taught uh some culinary students here um yeah a few months ago and i've been teaching them and actually they the director of the school she found me because she took her students to a um cooking competition in switzerland i think right. last year and they lost points because they had a lot of food waste oh <laughs> she was not happy about that Ooh. so yeah through connections she's like hey maybe you can help us with this problem right. so when i talk to them i just show them all these examples of like how food waste like different solutions that are out there mm-hmm. that deal with food waste and yeah so that's just one example of like yeah there there's you know there's different things out there that we just don't other random people don't know the answer right but with technology at our fingertips and people like you exposing people like me or you Mm -hmm. know the other people you've talked to Mm -hmm. we can find those solutions easier can you give us an idea an example of 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 of, uh avoiding food waste what what what, what's going on out there right so there's like some restaurants like you know Unfortunately, with the case with a lot of these things, they're more like higher ends, right? But like I've seen restaurants where they they have their own herb gardens, like right in the restaurant. They nice. just boom, cut it. Mm-hmm. Or they like, I've seen a few where they have like fish tanks um, and they use the food waste to feed the fish right there on site. Okay. Okay. And then so that becomes a circle, right? Circular economy. Mm-hmm. Or trying to think some other ones. Yeah, just com I mean composting is the obvious mm-hmm. one, right? Mm-hmm. But just doing right. that like on site, right? Right. Like, not yeah. using a middleman, but restaurants like they they know about, you know, this idea because right. nature is the perfect circular economy, right? If we could replicate what Absolutely. nature does, Absolutely. we'd be fine. Absolutely. Yeah. Because nature's where it's at. Right. You know, I'm I'm thinking about as you're talking about restaurants and circular economy and composting, that mm-hmm. they're an ideal source. Uh, of of soil health, aren't right. they? Yeah, composting, sure. enriching local soils, growing right. food locally, coming back into the restaurant. I mean, that's exactly. a particular path, right? Right. Yeah, and uh, those same kind of restaurants I talked about, they often have relationship with the local farmers, right? So they nice. you know, they're not wasting transportation costs by nice. getting nice. the food from them, and then yeah, they use the soil and all that stuff. Goes right. Hand in hand. Right. Tell me, Matt. What sort of tracking and systems are being used to monitor this at the moment? Is it pretty manual? How are restaurants coping with this? Yeah, I mean, I this is all just from my own research. Like, I'm just searching out like restaurants that do blah blah blah, but I haven't found like a good like centralized way to keep track of that. If that's what you what you mean? Yeah, Yeah. that's what I mean. I'm gonna be. I'm going to build yeah, that. I, I, I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> I can't wait to see how that's going. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, plug that's, aside. That's uh, definitely something we need. Yeah, for sure. Right, right. Fantastic. So, um, so what is your day? What's your typical day um, mm-hmm. look like? Okay. So, like I said, I am in a bit of a transition. So, I still do teach English as like my main source of income because mm-hmm. we all gotta, you know, pay the bills. We all gotta. So, yep. The money. <laughs> so yeah, Monday to Friday, yeah, I teach at an English school here in Taiwan, um, mm-hmm. about six hours a day. Mm-hmm. But in the mornings, so actually, I got a great opportunity um, a few months ago to start uh, working with the Ministry of Education here, like the government education sector. Okay. And like I said. Taiwan's doing a good job promoting this stuff. So they have a project where they're they narrow down to like I think it's 25 topics related to climate change. Right. And uh, they want to make videos that will be used through all the elementary schools in Taiwan. Oh. And of course, it's mostly uh, Taiwanese teachers, mm-hmm. but Taiwan also wants to become bil- a bilingual country. So they wanted they got me to be the English guy. So oh, I'm working cool. on 10 of those uh, videos, um, mm-hmm. mostly related to net zero by 2050, which is a big goal for Taiwan and some European countries as well, I believe. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I'm just, yeah, trying to, like I said, like like you asked me before, how do I um, juggle the doom and gloom with hope, right? right? So I'm like writing these scripts for these videos I'm right. in the process of doing that now. Right. Uh, that's like every morning before my day job. Okay. And soon I'm going to start filming those videos too. Yeah. Oh, this is, um, just fills me with hope listening to this. Yeah. So so, so cool. reading that back to you then. So, so Taiwan are introducing, implementing an educational program for the youth mm-hmm. in all schools. Right. It's going to be bilingual and yeah. they're going to ensure the education of all school children in mm-hmm. matters of circularity and climate change is that right. what, yeah that be fair yep. you got it yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's huge. basically like yeah like i said most of the teachers are taiwanese they're making their own videos yes i don't know how many teachers maybe 30 of us and right. i'm the only english one but i'm making 10 videos in english and right. these videos they will be you know shown in the schools to all the kids across taiwan so <laughs> it's a pretty yes. cool opportunity for me for sure so um, important so they I'm will end yeah. this so important. So they'll enter their further education and adulthood with a very firm mm-hmm. grounding in yep. the in the risks to the environment and ways right. to, to do different in their yep. in their careers, right? Right. Yeah. So I'm yeah, I'm really proud of Taiwan that they're like really they're realizing how important this is and right. they want they want all kids to know, you know. So right. it's gonna be readily available for them. And do you know how Taiwan compares to the rest of the world in terms of implementing and taking the lead mm-hmm. with this? Is this uncommon or? Uncommon? In Asia, it's it's growing, but I would say Singapore is like the leader in Asia for this kind of thing. And right. then it's like Taiwan and Japan, and then the other countries are starting to catch up. But yeah, Taiwan is, yeah, it's a they're a leader for sure. And they they have a lot of collaboration with EU and they model a lot of their policies after what the EU is doing. Okay. EU is definitely king when it comes to a lot of this stuff. So, right. yeah, it's good that Taiwan is trying to follow their example. It's very encouraging, Matt. I feel really yeah. encouraged hearing things like this. You know, <laughs> yeah. that governments are involved in taking a lead and moving to the front of this issue rather mm-hmm. than reluctantly sitting at the back of the room and right. having, being shouted yeah. by everyone else. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah for sure. This is yeah. awesome. And right. so when do you finish? So you're currently studying a master's in sustainability. Is that the title of your Oh, I, Actually, I finished that a year ago. Um, oh, you finished it? Okay. Yeah, yeah that, and that's what led me to be able to do these oh, other projects I'm doing. Oh, yeah. oh, okay, so. okay. I see. And what was, what was the actual name of that? What was the subject? Uh, the degree was Environmental Science and Humanities. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like the social side of environmental problems. Okay. So I ended up doing my thesis uh, project it was a survey and I wanted to see how willing were Taiwanese consumers to switch to circular business models that reduce the plastic waste, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. And what did you okay. find? That people overwhelmingly uh, were eager to do to like, they, they were happy to do that and even pay slightly more than they um. pay now, but they wanted to see some benefit. So maybe like, you know, like some restaurants or something do like point systems, you know, like if you use something 
mm -hmm. a certain amount of times you get points, blah, 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 yeah. or like discounts right. or just something like that. Okay. If that right. was available, people were willing to do it. Yeah. Right. So people expressed a willingness to pay more. They wanted mm -hmm. some kind of reward or benefit right. for doing so, but they mm -hmm. were wholly on board with this need yes. idea, which right. is great to hear. Yeah. You know, I'm aware that there have been surveys done in the UK at least, and I think maybe in the States, where mm -hmm. people have been polled for their willingness to support circularity, sustainability, and products that are mindful of the environment. So on right. paper, it's a resounding yes. But then when it comes to the wallet, it's right. resounding no. Right. But are you saying you found something different? Um, I mean, I haven't, you know, it was just a survey. So yes. it might be true what you're saying that when yeah. it actually happens, who knows? But I do know that, like I said, Taiwan is doing some things like, for example, I don't know if you, oh, my cup's green, so you can't see it. But oh, I have my reusable cup that I just bought a coffee before our meeting. And Taiwan just passed a, a law. It's a law that even though not all shops do it, but like the bigger stores, like 7-Eleven, like convenience stores, if you buy a drink from there, they have to give you a discount for bringing your own cup. Oh, and it's okay. like a, about a 10% discount, I think. Okay. And since that has happened, I've definitely, I mean, it's just anecdotal, but mm -hmm. I feel like I've definitely seen more people bringing their own. Okay, so, nice. And that kind of, uh, how can I say that? uh proves my study is true if that is true yes yes because it's exactly what i found so yeah fantastic fantastic mm. yeah so um so matt what what um what do you want to see most come out of your work and the passion the great work that you're obviously doing oh, what you. are your hopes and vision longer term you mm. know as we race towards 2030 even what, right what are you it's a great question. So, yeah, I mean, I also do like smaller things like on Instagram, like promote circular uh, companies in Taiwan that are doing like circular things. Mm -hmm. So, and I like, I try to like talk to them and, you know, I want to learn more. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I hope through like the education stuff I'm doing and the promotion of other, like helping these businesses. Yes. I guess I just, I don't have like a concrete goal, but I just want to see these things keep growing and, mm -hmm see the awareness grow maybe right. i need to decide myself what that actually looks like <laughs> right um, you know yes i love this i mean you're clearly adding so much value to the whole mission um towards saving humanity from the worst impacts of climate change and there there isn't always i mean you do have a tangible role but you're clearly doing so much um and not everything that we do is going to be quantifiable and neatly labeled right. but the, the whole sure. power and influence and butterfly effect of our work mm -hmm. will change the atmosphere it will right. ripple outwards and so yeah, if you've got yeah. you know and there's an exponential effect of all of us you know billions of us doing that there's going mm -hmm. to change right right yeah. um, so no effort is too insignificant or too vague it's all amazing Right. It can be it can be hard to remember that sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, I try I'm my best. Sure. Well, yeah. it's easy to feel lost. It's easy to feel like a drop in the ocean mm -hmm. when there's when there's such apathy present right. in the world. Yep. You know, yep, from governments sure. down to to citizens. It's easy mm -hmm. to feel like a drop in the ocean, but um but uh, we we will gather we'll gather momentum and we'll gather impact as we join together yeah. and collaborate like this. Right, yeah, and that's, it, right? I love what you're doing too. Like, just awesome. giving the name is great. I love the name, so yeah, yeah, just giving people a chance to yeah share what we're all yes, doing. Absolutely, because this is gonna. I mean, when do we ever hear about what's going on in Taiwan and in the education right. system? And you're bringing that to this call, so I can share that with my community. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, more of this, I think. Yeah, for sure, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I've loved our chat. It's really good to hear about your work. Such precious work you're doing with the young people. Right. Um, send send their send their regards, my regards to them. Even I will, <laughs> I will. <laughs> and when those uh when those videos are ready, I'll share them with you. You can check them out. It'll be a oh, few months, but yeah. Oh, I'd love to see them. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. And just to give you a little more context, when you're asking like, how do you keep giving the hope? So mm -hmm. my little like brand is uh this so. Eco journeyman. Eco journeyman. <laughs> so I'm yeah. trying to like the idea is like 
everyone can be like a superhero, right? We can all like do, it doesn't have to be like a big, you know, like yeah. save the world, right. like Superman, but we can all do our little things every day that yeah. make a small impact. But like you said, if billions of us are doing that, that can really make a change. So yes. in the I videos, know. I'm going to be like, you know, posing as a superhero to tell <laughs> the kids like, you can, oh, you can be an eco hero, you know, you oh, can do it. And I, I think we that. all can do that, you know. Mm, love that. Love that. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Well, Matt, thank you so much for joining me on The Circularist. And keep up the good me. work. And I'd love us to, when you've released some videos, would you come back and talk to us about how that's oh, going, how that's been received? Sure. Um, yeah, so I would love to. Update everybody. That would be awesome. Yeah, I would love to. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me. Okay. okay. See you. Bye-bye.